Welcome to Six Gun Guitars Luthier Lessons video series. Um, today we're going to talk about Watco Danish Oil. Um, I had a couple of folks ask me via email looking for a finish that has a natural look that doesn't set up on top of the surface but kind of in the surface and that doesn't really have that kind of hard plastic coated look to it um, like some of the other finishes do. So um, I just want to do a quick little shot on the Watco Danish Oil. Um, there's a hundred different versions of Danish Oil out there. I just chose the Watco because that's what they had. Um, the stuff looks like this, and it comes in a number of different flavors. This is the natural one. Um, there's a bunch of different colors in here, and there's um, the different colors that you can buy. Um, it's really just a pigment. Uh, it's a pigment that kind of performs like a dye, so it's not going to obscure the grain too much, but it's going to add a little bit of its own kind of flavor to it. Um, they've got walnut, and they've got a golden oak, and just a bunch of other different ones, but I like the natural and I've used it before on a couple of little older projects, but the cool thing about Danish oil, um, it's, it's an oil varnish blend. So there's oil in there, there's also varnish in there. So you get that, the nice thing about an oil is it gets down in there and it makes the grain pop. It makes the color come alive. I mean, if there's any figure in there, it really makes it come out, which is very cool. The other thing too about this particular product is it dries, basically it says it dries in the surface and not on the surface. Um, when you feel the surface itself, you can tell that something's been applied to it, but it has an almost natural feel. It almost feels just like wood. I mean, it really doesn't feel like anything else. So if you wanted to do an instrument or, or any French piece or anything for that matter that just looked like wood but had that really nice, you know, oil kind of pop to the finish, Danish oil is going to be the way to do that. And this is probably the easiest thing that I've ever put on. Um, I've done true oil before. I've done some other wiping varnishes, things like that. I mean, this just goes on with a rag, and you keep wiping it until there's no pools left. I mean, it is done. It's that easy. And we're going to take you over to the bench in a few, and I'll show you how to do that. But um, like I said, it is a just a fantastic finish. It's really easy to work with, really inexpensive, and I mean, one of the better finishes as far as just creating that natural look. Um, now, it doesn't have a lot of protection. You know, protection is kind of medium low. I mean, there's really not a ton of protection to the wood itself. Um, but it is going to give it that nice look to it. And if you really want to get that protection, but you like the color that the Danish oil gives you, you can do a wipe on poly after that. Um, just give it, you know, several days, if not a week, to really, really dry out before you do it. And then you can put a regular old poly on top of it, and, you know, it'll go really, really well. It'll still give it that protection, but you still get the cool color pop. So let's go over to the bench, and we'll show you how to apply this stuff. Um, it's a, there's a few steps involved, and it takes a little bit more time than like a true oil does but it's well worth it. So we'll show you how to do that now. So here we are over at the bench and we're going to do some application. Um, this is a several step process, but what's cool about the Danish oil is you can actually sand it back and fill the grain with it, which is really, really neat because you can get a totally flat surface. And you can either leave that surface totally flat and just hit it with a couple more coats of the Danish oil, or like I said earlier, you can go ahead and put on like a wipe on poly, uh, like an armor seal on there, and it'll you know, have all of the protective qualities, you know, of a regular hard-wearing varnish, but it'll still have the natural look. So, first step is to go ahead and flood the piece. Now, I'm using a piece of oak plywood here, so it's really not going to go in a whole hell of a lot further than that first layer, um, but, I mean, it's still going to be a pretty accurate demonstration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get some on here, and what you want to do is you want to keep wiping it on for, you know, 20-30 minutes or so, you just want to keep getting it on there and you want to chase down any spots that dry because it's sucking up the oil. You just want to kind of keep it wet so with the grain. I sanded this down to 220 before I, before I started this. And you can see the color that you get out of it. And again, this is just the natural. But I mean, you really get a good color pop out of it. So sand it down to 220. Um, you can probably sand down to 320 or 400 if you really want because this is if you're not planning on putting anything over it because again this is going to be an in the surface type of finish so your final surface on the top will be cool it would be really really flat but on the other hand you are going to if you're going to do the grain filling procedure you really don't want to sand past like 220 anyway because you're going to wind up sanding the finish itself with 400 so I got one good coat on here and what you want to do now is just kind of let it hang for a few minutes You'll see some spots that are going to start to lighten up, and when you see a spot that does that, you're going to go ahead and get a little bit more of the oil on the rag, and just go ahead and keep applying it to it. Because the wood is going to suck it up, and it's going to suck up as much as it can, 
Um, the whole point of it is you want to keep it wet and keep the stuff on there, but you really, really don't want to develop any pools or any stickiness. And this is oak too, and a lot of the open poured woods will kind of regurgitate some of the oil after a few minutes. So you want to be vigilant and kind of watch that. Because if it kicks out a bunch of oil and it sits on the surface, it's going to be a tacky, sticky mess. And it's going to add to your dry time. And you're going to have to sand through it, which is going to be a pain either way. So first time, spend 15, 20 minutes, just keep on re-oiling it. Um, you know, keep it so that way there's oil on the surface and you can feel a little bit of smoothness, but there's no, no puddles. And then after, you know, 30, 45 minutes, you know, a couple hours even, um, of drying time. I really give it a couple hours on the first coat. We'll come back and we'll go ahead and do some wet sanding where we're actually going to sand with Watco and 400 grit sandpaper and that's what we're going to use to actually fill the grain in the oak to make it totally level. So what I'm going to do is spend probably the next 20 minutes just dabbing areas here that, that start to suck it up and start to look like they're dry. I'm going to let it dry for a couple hours and then I'll bring these back and show you how to do the, the pour leveling process with the sandpaper and with the Danish oil. So we're back with the Danish oil and this, I came out here, it's been about an hour and this is dry. I mean almost completely dry. So I'm going to go ahead and start on my wet sanding here. Now this is what the board looked like to begin with. That's what it looks like now. So it's made a pretty significant change which is great. But when you hold it up to the light and you look at it you can still see that the pores are wide open and I don't want that. I want a filled pour flat look. Um, especially if you're going to go ahead and put an armor seal or wipe on poly on afterward, you definitely want to fill that totally flat so that when you put it on there you can buff it out and you'll get a finish that you can read through. I mean it's just, it'll be beautiful, very, very reflective. So what I'm going to do now is take you over to the bench and show you how to do the sanding and that's going to fill our grain. So once this is dry, you want to come back to this with about a 600 grit paper. Um, 400 grit will suffice, um, but 600 grit is usually about the best. Um, 400 grit is going to make the sawdust a little bit faster, but you can have the chance of leaving some marks, so you might have to clean up a little bit at the end. But what all you really want to do is get a little bit of your Danish oil, and this is difficult to do without spilling, but get a little bit of your Danish oil on there, and that's actually a bit more than I wanted. But what you can do is come back with a rag, come back with a rag at that point, and sop a bit of it up. So what you want to do now is take your sandpaper and start spreading some of this stuff around. And oh, a little bit of a bigger chunk on there. That's no good. All right, so go ahead and start spreading this stuff around. And I like to do circular motions. I'm using 400 grit wet and dry paper. And what I'm doing is I'm building up a slurry. I'm building up a slurry of wood dust that the sander is doing for me. And what it's doing is it's mixing with the Danish oil and it's falling down into the pores. So when it mixes and falls down in the pores, it seals your wood for you. So you just basically want to keep on going until you've built up a good slurry. So you've built up a good slurry and until you've got the fill that you're looking for. So I'm just going to splash out just a little bit more of this. I just don't like the way that these cans are. They're kind of hard to pour out of. But So I'm just going to keep on going. Kind of working my way around this. Now this isn't the absolute fastest thing in the world, but it's about as fast as doing it, you know, any other way. Just like a you know, regular paste filler or anything like that. And a lot of the wait time is removed because you're you're doing the filling pretty much immediately. And the other nice thing about filling with this method is you don't have to worry about getting a match because you are literally filling it with the exact same piece of wood. So you're going to be getting the exact same color, which is nice. So it's starting to get a little sticky, you know, and that's going to happen as the oil works its way in. You start getting a little bit sticky. You just want to keep going, and every now and then you got to give the board a little bit of a pickup 
and kind of start, kind of look against the light and see if you're getting your grain filled. Now we're getting really close here. Um, I just want to add, I want to add a little bit more oil to this. Add a little bit more oil to this and do just a bit more sanding. That way these guys are completely full. Now once they're totally full, you got a couple of options. You can let everything you can wipe off a little bit of your slurry. Um, try to get as much of it as you can. Um, you want to wipe across the grain so that way you don't run the risk of tearing it out as you're doing it or tearing out this, the, uh, the fill that you basically worked so hard to put in there. So wipe across the grain with your rag and get as much of the oil off as possible. Because again, you don't want to leave a sopping wet mess on the top of the wood. Because if you do that, it's going to take days and days to dry and it's just not going to look very good. Um, the other thing you can do is wipe off, you know, a little bit of it, not a ton, but just get enough of it off so it's not a mess to dry. And then if it dries and there's still a little bit of slurry left on the surface, you can sand that out. And then you can go ahead and put on some fresh Danish oil because all you're going to be sanding is what was on the surface. And you're not going to be pulling any of this stuff out of the grain holes. So you're really not going to be messing any of your fills up. Just one extra step. Um, I like to try to get as far as I can by wiping. That way, if I do have to come back and sand again and fill again, I only have to do it a little bit. It will kind of fill everything. So Make sure you mind the edges of your board pretty good. Um, they tend to get neglected. So keep on going. Um, I'm pretty darn close to full here. You know, I've got a good slurry that I can kind of just barely see on here. I can see that I'm pushing the stuff around. And starting to tack up just a little bit. So I'm going to hang on to that for now. So I'm done there. And what I'm going to do is take a rag. It's actually the same one I used earlier. And I'm going to wipe just nice and easy across the grain. I'm not pushing very hard. I just want to get the slurry out of the way. Don't really want to remove a lot here. I just want to remove that sawdust slurry so that way it doesn't dry on the top. And I don't want to push too hard and too deep because I don't want to get into the pores and remove that. So again, 400 grit. Check it every now and then. Keep doing it as often as you need to and keep sanding until everything looks full and level. Wipe it off across the grain when you're done, and you can see all the goop that I picked up from the slurry. But this is, this is looking pretty good. There's a couple of spots that I can still catch that don't have it yet, and aren't totally full yet. But I'm just going to let this go. I'll come back and do another one, do the exact same procedure, wipe it off. Then I'll probably put maybe one more coat of Danish oil on here. And then again, if you want, you can go over to like a wipe on poly, and you can finish it out. But I mean, just a gorgeous, gorgeous look going from unfinished, kind of blah, to finished with the Danish oil and basically completely flat too, which is nice. But that's just basic Watco Danish oil. I'm a lot of, I know how Watco works pretty well, um, as it's the only one I've really ever used. Um, everybody makes one. But if you have an opportunity, you know, pick it up, give it a try, try it on some test boards and see how you like it. Um, I do like the grain filling method for this a lot and um, you know, it just seems like it works really really well. And it makes a really nice good looking finish that's very close to the wood very natural looking and if you do want to go with something for more protection again you can always add that armor seal wipe on poly afterward and you'll get the best of both worlds. You get the great color ease of application and you'll get the protection. But if you have any questions on Danish oil just uh, shoot me an email it's sixgunguitars at gmail.com.